Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and in particular the role of the stomach when it comes to atrial fibrillation. Now a ton of people have written to me and said you know I have atrial fibrillation, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, I'm young, I have no comorbidities, I don't have diabetes, I don't have high blood pressure, I'm a young guy, why do I have atrial fibrillation and uh, why is it that when my stomach is bad, uh, my atrial fibrillation is bad? Uh, or why is it that when I have uh, a bad stomach or I have reflux, why do I then seem to get episodes of atrial fibrillation? So I thought I'd look into this a little bit more. Now we know that stomach issues are really common uh, in the Western world. Uh, and that is largely because of lifestyle and uh, food and the quality of food and the quantity of food that we consume. Um, so we know that stomach issues are incredibly common and in particular there is a condition called a, hi a hiatus hernia um, which uh, tends to affect a lot of people okay and so people will often say i get indigestion you know i get uh, reflux and um, it's not uncommon for someone to look down into the throat and then find that the patient actually has um, a hiatus hernia what a hiatus hernia is it's a protrusion of the stomach into the chest cavity uh, uh, and what can happen then is that you get a little bit of stomach protruding into the chest and when that happens that can actually mechanically impinge on the left atrium which is the posterior most structure of the heart which lies you know at the back and that mechanical compression or mechanical pressure on the left atrium could potentially cause um, uh, uh, um, you know ectopics or atrial fibrillation or atrial uh, rhythm disturbances uh, so I was very keen to try and explore this connection between uh, uh, the stomach and atrial fibrillation and in particular um, whether atrial fibrillation is more common in patients who have hiatus hernias. So I did some research and I came across a really interesting paper uh, that was published in the Journal of Atrial Fibrillation in 2013 and this was published by an author called Roy, R-O-Y. If you join my Facebook page I should hopefully put a link up to the paper um, uh, tonight. So what these guys did was they conducted a study in um, at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester and they took 30 years worth of patients so from 1976 to 2006 uh, they took all those patients who had a diagnosis of hiatus hernia and then they looked to see how many of them had or developed atrial fibrillation uh, and they compared them with what is known of a general population of the same age group. Okay, so they compared what they found uh, with what has already been published about uh, prevalence of atrial fibrillation in the general population at that age group. And the results are really, really interesting because what they found was that in men under the age of 55, there is a 17 and a half fold uh, greater likelihood of having atrial fibrillation compared to uh, a general population of patients under the of men under the age of 55. So men under the age of 55 seem to have a 17 and a half fold increase a chance of having atrial fibrillation. When you look at women under the age of 55 the results are even more astounding because there appears to be a 19 fold increase in women under the age of 55 who have a hiatus hernia. Uh, of them developing atrial fibrillation compared to uh, women under the age of 55 in a general population. So women under the age of 55 with a hiatus hernia have a 19-fold increased likelihood of having atrial fibrillation. These are astounding results. Um, and what, you, what they found was that in every age group, as you got older, if you had a hiatus hernia, you were more likely to have atrial fibrillation compared to uh, a person or a population of the same age group who, who, who would a general population, not specifically patients with hiatus hernias. But the difference between the two groups got less and less as you got older. So whereas it was, um, you know, 17 and a half fold 
um, if you're under the age of 55 it's about 1.2 fold if you're above the age of 85 something like that so so there is still an increased risk of having atrial fibrillation if you have a higher tissue at any age group but particularly in the young patients under the age of 55 there seems to be a much higher uh, uh, prevalence of atrial fibrillation so this is really interesting um, the question then is that is it that is that just an association that you know if you have a hiatus hernia you're more likely to have atrial fibrillation or does the hiatus hernia in some way cause the atrial fibrillation and that's not very clear and I wanted to explore that and um, I therefore decided that I would um, uh, look through the literature and I couldn't find any studies which directly point to causation but I did find at least three case reports of people uh, who had hiatus hernias and when the hiatus hernia was treated the atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation was treated so there was a guy who had a large paraesophageal hernia and um, he was getting a lot of atrial fibrillation after food after eating and when he had surgical correction of the hernia uh, the atrial fibrillation went away interestingly there was another case of a patient who had atrial flutter paroxysmal atrial flutter who had even had an attempt at an ablation and the ablation didn't sort it out but when he was put on um, proton pump inhibitors uh, his atrial flutter went away so that's really interesting so we don't have any large studies but anecdotally and looking at just so sort of isolated case reports it does appear that there may be some causation why would this occur well there are three options there are three possibilities number one there is obviously the mechanical pressure of the hiatus hernia on the back of the heart on the left atrium which could stimulate atrial rhythm problems number two there could be the possibility that there is a lot of inflammation so when you have a hiatus hernia you get more reflux you get more inflammation the inflammation causes adrenaline release causes cortisol release and that could spark off atrial fibrillation and the third possibility is that when you have reflux disease uh, you have a higher vagal tone and that could stimulate vagal atrial fibrillation so i hope you found this useful um, uh, and if you are young and you have no other comorbidities and you get a lot of reflux it may be worth having uh, going and seeing your doctor and asking him to have an endoscopy to make sure you don't have a hiatus hernia. And if you did have a hiatus hernia, then treating it pro probably with medications initially um, could have an impact on how frequently you get your atrial fibrillation. And it may even possibly render you symptom free. Uh, so I hope this was useful. Um, uh, as always, I'm very, very grateful to you to, uh, for subscribing and listening to me. Uh, if you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. Uh, please also consider visiting my website, uh, www.yourcardiology.co.uk, and also my um, Facebook page, which is, uh, if you type in yourcardiology at gmail.com, you'll find me on Facebook. I also have a Twitter page, which is your cardiology. So thank you so much and I wish you a good night. Thank you so much. Let me just switch this off.